All right, so chapter chapter one, uh, the magic of Python, computers and programs. Uh, you know, just going through. Mainly going to go through the actual programs. Um, there's some really good stuff. You know, obviously talking about program power, hardware basics, programming languages, etc. The magic of Python. Um, and then on page ten, they. Uh, you know, start going into some the, uh, the print function, which is a function uh, in Python three. So you have to use parentheses. We'll talk about functions in a little bit. Print two plus three. Three. And that comma means there's going to be a space. So maybe to make it look nicer, do two plus three equals, and then a space there, and then comma. Two plus three. And even making it, maybe making it closer, closer together shows that it's not a string. Um, I don't know, there's probably, oh, and then there's that space there. So there's two spaces there. Let's try it. Let's... And really the main goal is to always, oh, I see. It was that, that right there, that space. So there's a space here. And then that comma creates a space. So there's two spaces. We only want one. So, because we want it to look kind of clean looking. So there it is, 2 plus 3 equals 5. Clean looking. Spacing is not, you know, a huge, huge deal right now since it's chapter 1, we're just getting started. But it's, you know, these types of details I think are really important in there. And I think that they're, um, they're just helpful um, with regards to being in that, like, learning, detail-oriented, focused, laser-like mode. All right, so let us let us create a function. Let's create a function here. So it's going to be hello. This uh, what's inside the parenthesis are arguments. We're not going to pass any arguments. Um, and then it press enter. It gives us the spacing. So we can do this right here in the idle. Uh, the Python shell, um, and obviously this is Python three. So, so print computers. Okay. So now we're at the prompt. Now we can call the function, which you just. Name, you just uh, write the function's name, you write down the arguments you're going to pass. Since this doesn't have any arguments, which, but it still has to keep the blanks and it will let you know, it's letting you know, hey, calling this function doesn't have any arguments, doesn't take any arguments. And there is hello, computers are fun. That is. Uh, It is invoked, it is called, by typing, typing its name followed by parentheses, here's what's happened, here's what happens. Um, they're executed in sequence, these two print statements. So uh, now we're gonna define a function that takes an argument. So this is gonna be person, uses semicolon with Python. Just print, press enter, it'll indent for you. Um, then we can print hello. And 
Now we know that this comma, there's no space here, so there's going to be a space here because there's that comma here outside of the parenthesis. So there's, it's going to be hello, comma, space, and then the person's name. And then print. We're going to have another print statement. Are you? Okay. Now we're going to call greet and we're going to pass the argument John, which is going to be a string. Hello, John, how are you? We can do the same thing for Emily. Right, and then if you want to mess around just to try something, you could see how it looks with uh, an integer. You're like, okay, well, let's try uh, a decimal. There it is. Um, what they let you? What are you doing? Oh no, no, you can't. Once you're up here, you can't. Uh, but yeah, that's. Um, so that customizes our result. That's that's defining a function with with one argument person and then passing or invoking uh, those arguments um, when we want to call the function now let's try print with no argument because it is a function and it just leaves it gives you a, it gives us a blank line so uh, this is on page 12 um, but if you just write greet, as uh, Professor Zell states, it shows that it's a function, and it shows the location of that function. The interactive Python session will show some output indicating what function the name refers to. So it shows the function the name refers to. It's the location or address in computer memory where the greet function definition is stored. Obviously, it's going to be a different address than the one in the book. So that, that's all that that is. And now let's type in the word print without using the parenthesis. It's basically you're asking uh, Python, or the interpreter rather, um, you know, about the print statement. It's kind of like a a glossary request, a glossary entry request for the word print, and it's a built-in function called print. Um, so we're going to do the chaos program. Uh, a lot more thoroughly in our our uh next um video so you know during in the programming exercises so um the big thing that i think is crucial is pages 16 and 17 where the effect of the loop at the bottom of, of 16 the effect of the loop is exactly the same as if we had written the body of the loop 10 times so if you say for i in range 3, which is 0, 1, and 2, right, in terms of exact numbers, um, but it occurs th three times. So it's, it's saying repeat this three times, essentially. Repeat this, this, uh, these actions um, and or thoughts that the computer you know, that we're instructing the computer to, to have or perform. 
um, three times. So it's a loop, right? So it loops three times. So let's say um, print. So let's say x equals x plus one. Uh, no, we didn't. We didn't define x yet. So let's just 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 do a print. So let's just say print print i. Let's just print i. There you go. So so for i in range three, print i. So every time it goes through, it's going to print what i is. What what is this? What number is assigned to i? So i is zero, i is one, and i is two. And then once it hits two, it's now out of that range, the number three, because that's zero, one, and two. It's, it's there's three numbers starting from zero, and then so it kicks out of the loop. You know, we could do the same thing, and we could do anything you do for x in range. And note the colors are very helpful. Um, let's actually punch in range because it's a built-in. It's a built-in function. It's excuse me, built-in class. It's a called. It's a class called range. So let's punch in for. Actually, that might be a mis. I don't know if we can use that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have to. We can't look at the definition of for. So, uh, for I. Let's just do for for n. For n in range seven, print i squared. Oh, I messed up. How did I mess up? Okay, let's. Well, for i in range seven, print. I squared um, I equals I plus one. So we need to increment I. Um, we're doing it seven times. We're going to go through the loop seven times, which is what the number seven shows us, but we still have to increment I. Um, actually, increment N. Excuse me. Okay, so. There we go. So now 0, 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36. Because the range, range 7 is going to be 0 through 6. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It's 7 times, but it starts at 0, so it ends at 6. And then we're squaring it. N squared. We're going to print N squared, then we're going to then we're going to increment N up by 1. Increment N by 1, which is to bump it up by 1. Um, but yeah, this is a good start a good really you know good well respected uh python uh primer or primer um and uh, we'll see you guys in the next video hopefully thank you